guess I am because I have to be, right? Yeah. Good afternoon. Welcome to another episode of Sewing Badly with Brent. Except today we're not sewing badly. We're going to talk some science. Lots of sciencey science. We're going to because um anyway yes an interesting question was asked. <laughs> then I took it to a whole other level, so we're going to get there. Um, as far as shop news goes, check the calendar. We've got some classes coming up. Um, I got totally sidetracked when I was preparing for this this morning because what I was going to talk about versus what... Well, and then I told Brenda what I was going to talk about, and then she said something to me, which sent me off on a tangent, which made it... I didn't have any time to actually prep the shop news stuff. So, refer to the email that I sent out yesterday for new collections, which was, I think was the same collection we showed last, last week. And then also, like I said, check the calendar for classes. We do have the um, computer concepts coming up tomorrow afternoon, which is kind of a basic computer class. We're not going to get into anything crafty, so to speak. We're just covering the basics of computers. So if it's something that you're interested in, it's basic, you know, files, directories, file extensions, you know, the Stuff like that. And if anything I just said made sense to you, then you probably don't need to come to the class. If everything I just said sounded like Greek, this class is for you. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, I believe Brian is golfing and Becky is doing taxes because it's that season and her day job is, you know, actual work. So that's where um, Becky's at, yes. Um, anyway, so... I guess that's all I have for shop news, which is really quick, um, because, well, that's all I have for shop news. Oh, check out our, um, I think, Facebook. Danny's been doing some really cool stuff with, like, graphics, so that's really kind of cool. Check that out. Sign up for our block of the month. Um, if you do sign up for our block of the month, you will notice that um, we have a new way. Because it's going to be subscription-based, we're trying a new system where, and so this will work well if you're watching us from afar. If you sign up for a block of the month, it will set you up. Um, it goes through our square payment system. So it'll set you up on a subscription for 12 months. So every month you'll get billed for it, and then we'll ship out the block. So if you're watching us from Texas or Ohio or California, wherever, if you do sign up for a block of the month, our website is now set up that it's just you sign up for it, and it will automatically ship it for you every month. So it's nothing you have to worry about. Uh, it's a little bit different than the normal checkout process. So um, just be aware of that if you bought from, if you purchased from us before and then it looks a little bit different for the block of the month. It is going to be a separate cart, so you can't do buy the block of the month at a bunch of yards at the same time. You'd have to do two separate carts. And keep an eye out for that because if that works like it's supposed to, which I've got a couple that came through and it seems like it's working, we <laughs> not to worry. Um, we're also going to be starting a couple other subscription services that should be pretty interesting and people will be interested in, so stay tuned for that. All right. Any comments I should be aware of? I've got comments right here. I'm not seeing anything. Um, we're going to get into some... Now, I, when I first put this together, I was going to totally geek out and get into amps, watts, ohms, and all that stuff. And then I realized that would put most of you to sleep and I would cover all of my material in about 10 minutes unless I really wanted to put you to sleep. But we're going to talk about that a little bit. Just so if you want to go take a nap, now is the time. After we get done talking about that, I've got a really fascinating math problem that I started. <laughs> I'm going to walk you all through it because Brenda made the point, well, you should talk about the electrical job because with the prices of electricity going up, you don't want people complaining about how you got to stop sewing because it's getting so expensive. I've done the math, and the math is awesome, and it's going to be a lot of fun when we get there. But the real ones I want to talk about this was one of the things you do run into when you start to sew is you have to worry about surge protectors and circuit breakers, which in some parts of the world, that's not in some parts of the country, or um, not a big deal. In New England, it's kind of fun because you have all these old houses that slowly got upgraded over time and sometimes the electrical isn't up to par. So what I wanted to talk about today is just the basics of electricity so you can understand a few things. Um, what I want, what we're going to talk about is, I know it was on here, right here. Do you want to zoom in on this, Eddie? Every electrical appliance has this on it. This is some interesting information, and I'm going to tell you what this has to do with anything. Um, 
And so, you know, because I don't, if you put too many irons on and so a bunch of stuff starts up at the same time and you pop a breaker, I'm going to show you how to read this or explain to you what this means so that you'll know what that, um, how this affects your current situation. And that's kind of a dad joke pun, a current situation as it relates to electricity. You'll see why in a second. Um, anyway, so basically what that is telling us is um, it tells us um, how many volts most all of your appliance, any appliance you're plugging in, if you're in the United States, is going to be 120 volts. It's going to say that on there, 120 volts. Now, if you look at plugs for like a phone, it's going to say something different. Like it'll be like output um, five. It's usually like um, uh, three volt, three volts at five amps or something like that for a phone charger. But for almost all of your appliances, are all going to be 120 volts, which means it's AC. That's irrelevant. The big, the, the thing that's important, that 120 is an important number we'll come back to. The thing that's important to look at is it's either going to have a watts. In this case, this, um, this iron is listed at 1,500 watts, or it's going to have an amp um, rating on it. And for example, oh, you want to zoom in on this, Eddie? The back side of that, this is old school. We're going to get back to this in a minute, right here. You'll notice on there, there's a bunch of information, but there's something that does say one amp, 1.0 amp. I'm hoping you can see it because I can't see it to double check and I'm holding it up. Can you see where it says amp on there, Eddie? Yeah. Okay. This doesn't say watts, this says amps. Now, first electrical lesson, 101. Watts is equal to volts times amps. Since we know this is 120 volts because it plugs into my house that's 120 volts and it says it has one amp that means this sewing machine you can't see my sewing machine because the the view's bad but it's all right this sewing machine this kenmore has 120 watts and in fact if you look up here i do have that up on my thing over here showing that we have 120 watts because we saw from the from the uh the the plate that it had one amp and we know it's 120 volts so it's 120 watts because watts is amps times volts. It's all I remember from all of my electrical engineering classes. Amps times volts. All right, are we bored yet? Not yet. Okay. Now, let, I'm just going to give you a quick lesson on amps, volts, and watts. And I'm going to use this cup of water. All right. So, volts is the volume of electricity that you're trying to move. So in this case, I'm trying to move this volume of water. Um, actually, it's gonna be closely related to the, the diameter of the straw because you can get a certain amount of volume through the straw at any given point. So volts is how much electricity you're trying to draw. Amps is the current. So how fast are we drawing that electricity? So if I suck on this straw really hard, that's a lot of amps because I'm, I'm moving that I'm moving the current through the straw really really hard, um, really fast, um, and we're moving a certain volume through that straw, and that the volume is the volt. So the total of how fast I moved that volume is what would be the watts. That how fast and how much together becomes the watts. Now, I'm not going to suck on this because that's oil in there, but this straw is a much smaller diameter than this straw. So if I was going to try and suck water through this, I'd probably cave my forehead in because I can't move enough through it. You know, there's a, it'll take a lot of pressure to move the same amount. It takes a lot of pressure to move the same amount of water through this straw as it does this straw. So you're going to have to suck harder, and that's ohms, which we're not really going to get into too much. Ohms is the pressure buildup. But because this is a smaller straw, to move the same amount of volume per minute through it, we have to have a faster current. If we want to move the same, same amount of water, which would be the volts, we have to have more amps um, because we need more current to pull it through because it's a smaller diameter. And then the pressure that's created, that would be ohms. So that's why volts times amps equals watts because it's the total amount of, um, because the total amount of amps is the same. If you have a little bit of volume, but you're moving a lot of it, the, the, which is a high current, a low volume, high current, that's gonna be the same as a low volume and high current, or vice versa. But anyway, you see what I'm saying? 
Um, yes, mo mo a lot of houses are 110. That is kind of the default. Um, Jen, Jen just brought that up. But a lot of stuff is listed at 120 to give you that 10% um, safety factor. So if you ever see that on the back, it's listed at 120, which means you can put 110 into it and you'll be fine. But a lot of stuff is calculated at 120 so that because there is some fluctuation in AC current. Um, anyway, so that's amps versus amps ver uh, amps versus volts. Volts is volume, amps is current, and then you put them together, your volume plus your current, and that becomes your watts. Because, like I said, if you have more volume and less current, or less current and more volume, the end result is you're going to move the same amount of water. If we were talking about straws, like go to Burger King, they have. Um, low voltage straws because their straws are a lot smaller so if you go get a go get a um milkshake from burger king and go get a milkshake from mcdonald's that's all you need to know because you're gonna have to suck harder on the burger king milkshake because it's got a smaller straw and so the fact you have to suck harder means you're gonna have to put more amps into it to get the same amount of milkshake into your mouth versus um mcdonald's which has the bigger straw so you won't have to suck as hard so you need fewer amps to move the same same amount of volume. And then the pressure on there, there's another measurement pressure for wires, but then it's called ohms. So anyway, that's the basic electricity I was gonna cover and I was right. I did it in 10 minutes and I didn't wanna do much more than that because I was gonna bore you all to death. Right, any comments? Everybody's good? All right, now is the fun part because one of the things that's interesting is we think, oh, we got these, these huge new machines, so you got like this Luminaire, and I also brought out the pace setter because it was gonna compare numbers on both of these. And um, then we've got this old Kenmore. Now, what's interesting is this old Kenmore, the one in the back here, as I showed you the plate on, this has a one amp draw, which is a total work of, like I said, we're working on the 120 number. No, Burger King does not have the Shamrock Shake, unfortunately, but their chocolate milkshake, I think, is superior to the McDonald's chocolate milkshake, however, because of the straw situation, I usually go to McDonald's. But I guess you could go to McDonald's, get the straw, then go to Burger King to get the milkshake. First world problems right there. <laughs> anyway, so this Kenmore has a one amp draw, which is a total wattage of four, um, 1,200. Um, and actually, but why don't we go over to the board here, Eddie, because this is where I've started doing the math. As you can kind of see what we did over here, I'm gonna walk you right through it. So the old machine has a one amp draw, of 120 watts, which and we'll get into kilowatts in a second. The new machine, which, is, which I'm basing this off of a PS500, has um, 0.76, has a 0.76 amp draw, which would give you, um, using the 120, you could use 110, but I'm using 120 just from a safety factor, gives us a total of 80 watts. What's interesting, which you may not know, guess what the Luminaire gets for a rating? The Luminaire, actually, if you look at the, um, let me just double check it, make sure I'm not lying to you. In fact, um, in fact, if you want to just show it right there, can you zoom in on that for us? Right here, this is a very interesting finding. So, if you'll notice, the Luminaire has a 74 watt rating. So, the Luminaire actually uses less energy than... The, um, the PS500. And I thought that was interesting. Ah! I just fell on my head. Are we still, we still lined up? Okay, that was uh, exciting there for a minute. Um, so, that was an interesting one when I was, when I was doing the math for this, that the Luminaire actually draws a little bit less current, or a little, uh, a, a little bit less than the, uh, than the PS500. Food for thought on that. That's a very interesting, that, that, that speaks to the state of technology between these two machines, that this is draw, this is a more efficient machine based on this. Now, so this here um, is based on the PS500. So these numbers are actually based on the least efficient of the two new machines I have here. This old machine at the one amp, that's pretty common. If you look up um, machine, well, replacement parts for a motor for one of these, for, for an older machine, it's usually a one amp motor. So, this, so these numbers are gonna be pretty consistent. Now, what I wanted to figure out, because the problem that Brenda started with, was how much does it cost to run a machine so that when somebody comes in and complains, what, all that sewing, you know, we're, um, all that sewing, it's getting expensive. 
So, electricity is me measured in kilowatt hours. So if you look at your electricity bill, it's going to say KWH, kilowatt hours. A kilowatt is a thousand watts. So, electricity is based on how many kilowatts you're using per hour. So, every th so a thousand watts per hour is 15 cents. So, here's the math for that. So the old machine is 120 watts, which is actually 0.12 kilowatts because a thousand watts divided by a thousand, or 120 watts divided by a thousand gives you 0.2 watts. Same thing, so now we have kilowatts. So the new machine is 80 watts or 0 0.08 kilowatts. So far so good. Am I boring people yet? Uh, mad, not made, okay. Okay, I was just checking, checking comments real quick. No comments yet. So, cost of electricity, I just checked this out this morning. Um, it was all over the map. I saw some saying it was like 23 cents a kilowatt hour, but then you get like the third party guys and they're like down to like 13 or 14 cents an hour. I decided that 15 cents a kilowatt hour sounded good. It's probably cheaper depending where you're at. If you got windmills, you got solar panels, you got nuclear energy, you got coal, whatever. I don't know how they're making electricity anymore. I don't even care. All I know is that when I checked it online, New Hampshire, for my zip code, your average run about 15 cents kilowatt hour. So, to run the old machine now, and if you ever, so, so if somebody gets mad at you, you're like, oh, all your sewing is getting expensive because look at how much electricity you're using. Even the old machine at the inefficient one amp motor costs you 0 0.018 cents per hour to run. Think about that for a second. 0 0.018 cents hour to run. So that means you can run this thing for 10 for 10 hours and you own and I in um 10 hours and you're going to be at point uh almost 2 cents. So it's 2 cents a day. Is it is it point 0.18 cents or is that point 0.18 dollars? Point 0.18 dollars. Yes, I'm sorry. So that's almost 2 cents. Almost 2 cents an hour, yes. Good catch there, Eddie. So it's almost two cents an hour. So if you run it for 10 hours, you're almost at 20 cents and uh, for a day. So it's like 20 cents a day to run your sewing machine. A new machine is $0.12 per hour to run. So you run that for 10 hours, and that's like almost a penny and a half. Am I right? No. My math is off. No, because, yeah, that's 15 cents... So yeah, 0.12 cents. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so it's almost 12 cents if you run it for a, night, for, for a day there. So far, so good? I've just confused myself, so I imagine everybody else is confused. Next. Now, that was the original question. How expensive is it to run your machine for a day? Well, neither of these machines come up to more than a quarter for the day. So it's 25 cents for the day. I haven't figured out irons. Irons are a different problem, but we can actually figure that out real quick. Because we know that an iron, if you run it all the time, we looked at this iron. You want to change the view. So that we looked at this iron, and we found that it's 1,500 watts. So how many kilowatts is 1,500 watts? That is 0.15 kilowatts. So to figure out how much that costs to run an hour, you multiply that um, by 1.1 kilowatts, and uh, we're at 15 cents a kilowatt hour. So, and that's already in kilowatts, and that's kilowatts per hour, so 1.5 times 15 cents. That is going to be, I'm just going to run that real quick, 1.5 times 0.1. 20, so that's a 25 cents an hour is what it costs to run your iron. Point, I'll write it out here, point 0.225. That's what it's going to cost to run your iron an hour. We're not going to get into irons, that's a whole other thing, but that's what it's going to cost to run your iron for an hour. 25 cents. So if you're wondering what your hobby is costing you, aside from fabric and thread, <laughs> the, electri the electrical cost, when it's all said and done, is you're looking at about 25 cents an hour old or new machine. Now, the real question I wanted to get into, because then I was like, well, let's make an argument that you need to upgrade your machine. Right? 
who, who wants to make that argument? So we want to upgrade our machine because we have an old machine and we want to justify that um, we want to justify our new machine purchase because we're like, you know what? I heard that new machines are more um, efficient than old machines. So that means I can pay for the cost of my new machine in electrical savings. Does that theory theory hold? <laughs> okay, so we, since we figured out what it was going to cost to run the machines, we know, if you want to zoom in on this, the difference per hour to run a machine is a little over half a penny. So 0 0.006. That's the difference. Yes, Eddie, you had a uh, comment? Gene asks, can you determine the cost of instant on product? It's hard to, okay, we're going to take a quick side note because that is a very, this is very important. Um, we're going to have to edit this all out. Instant on products is they're going to do the full current draw on whatever they're rated at. They're going to do that full current draw as soon as it turns on. What you're going to run into, for example, with an iron, we figured it out at 25 cents an hour. That's probably inaccurate because once the iron is up to, is up to temperature, it's not going to draw that much current. It's only going to draw the current necessary to keep it warm. That's why if you plug all your irons in at once, um, you often will pop a breaker. Breakers are rated for 15 amps. Um, so if you divide 1500 watts by the volts, and we're going to use 100 volts, which is actually less, but it makes the math easier, one iron draws 15 amps at peak. Peak draws 15 amps. But it's not going to do that. Most of the time, an iron is going to just draw that while, while it heats up. So if you have two irons plugged into a 15 amp breaker, you're going to pop the breaker. Um, which is why sometimes you got to stagger the turn on. So instant on draws full current the minute it turns on, but once it's on and running, a lot of times, especially heat products, they'll start to taper back their current to maintain their heat. Um, so when we say that the iron costs 25 cents an hour to run, that's probably, you're probably really going to cost half of that because it's not going to run at full, full draw all the time. So yes, so that's how you instant on, just determine the, the cost of instant on is full current all the time. Actual iron is going to be a lot less than 25 cents. We're talking worst case scenario. Um, so there. I hope that answers your question there. Back to my original question. After I figured out how expensive it was to run a sewing machine, I was able to see that the difference between a new machine and an old machine is $0.006, which is half a cent, a little more than half a cent per hour, is what it costs to is what the difference in cost is for a machine. So with that information, we can figure out how many hours with that information, um, we now know how many hours we have to sew to pay for our new machine in electrical savings. So this is the sales pitch. If you've got somebody in your life that's like, no, you can't have a new machine, they're too expensive. We're now going to justify the cost of a new machine because of its efficiency over an old machine. And this is how long you're going to have to sew on that machine so that you can recoup the costs. Um, <laughs> what I did is the cost of machines vary. But these two numbers here are pretty close, the 80 watts versus 120 watts. So if you take this number and you multiply... Um, divide a hundred, a hundred dollars, because I figured this out per hundred dollars. So for the price of a machine, for every hundred dollars, you have to sew on that machine for sixteen thousand hours, and you will have recouped the, that hundred dollars <laughs> in the cost of electricity. So let's extrapolate that out. Let's say, for example, you want to buy a two thousand dollar machine, right? Two thousand dollars. Um, so we take this difference per hour of 0 0.06 cent, 0 0.06 dollars. So we, we're going to divide that by that difference to find out how long we have to, have to sew on that machine to recoup our money. That number comes out to, this, 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 this was the fun I was having today, and I know I'm geeking out and this really is useless information, but you're all going to suffer through this with me. So I multiply that out, and that number comes out to um, 
hours. So three, th a bunch of threes, 333,333. That's how many hours you need to sow to recoup your hundred dollars. Now we're going to say, well, that's a big number. Let's put it down to a more manageable number because that's hard to quantify. Let's just say you're an avid sower and you're like, you know what? I'm going to sow a lot. I'm going to sow 12 hours a day. So we're going to divide that hours. We're going to divide that by 12. So how many days are we going to have to sow at 12 hours a day? Um, hold on. I just messed up my numbers. Three, 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 three. Divide that by 12. And that gives us 27,000 days. That's how many days you're going to have to sow to recover the cost of your $2,000 machine. If you sow for 27,000 days, you will have paid for your machine in electrical savings. <laughs> oh, but wait, you say, that's kind of another big number. Let's just say, you know, you're going to sow five days out of the week because, um, you know, you need, you need a day off to go to church. You need another day off to do your laundry. So we're going to divide that. That's 27. So we're going to now divide that by five. And this is how many weeks you need to sew on your new machine to recover the cost in the electrical savings. 5,555 5, days. That's 100 years. Wait. No, 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 no. no, no. That's five, that, uh, no, no weeks. I'm sorry. It was 27,000 days. We're at 5,000 weeks. Right? But now let's look at thing in terms of years because these numbers still aren't quantifiable in our head because it's over a thousand. We're going to say there's 52 weeks in a year, but you're going to take a break from sewing because at this point we're sewing 12 hours a day, five days a week. You're going to need a couple weeks off. So we're going to say 50 weeks out of the year we're going to sew because you're taking two weeks off. So let's divide that by 50. And this is the number that you need to pitch the idea of a new machine to whoever does the bills. And look at that, it's a nice good number, 111. 111 years. 111 years at 15 cents a kilowatt hour. That's how long it's gonna take you to recover the cost of a $2,000 machine based on electrical savings. So your grandkids are probably going to have to uh, keep sewing on that machine to make those savings worth it. Um, and if you're watching from home and you're a better math person than I am, you can check my numbers. I'm not sure those are exactly right, but I think it's in that ballpark. So, so if you have a, a so now <laughs> if you go for the really big machine, you know the Luminaire, you've got to uh, multiply that by like eight eight or nine so you're up to like a thousand years it's gonna take a thousand years of sewing at 12 hours a day for five days a week to recover the cost of your sewing machine in electrical savings based on 15 cents a kilowatt hour <laughs> is that not awesome I was I thought this was a fun math problem and I was hoping that you know you could all share in my joy in this discovery. So yeah. So this is a hard argument to make. I get that. And I'm not but as electricity becomes more expensive, so in the great apocalypse, if electricity doubles or triples, so if you double the price of electricity, you can cut this in half. <laughs> <laughs> so it'll be 50 years if electricity gets up to 13 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, or if, if machines get more, more efficient, then this number also comes down. But also keep in mind that we're taking an old machine that's uh, a good vintage, you know, 70s machine. So if you have a newer machine, it's going to be a harder argument to make. But that was uh, today's uh, Sewing Badly with Brett. Was we had to, we had to uh, figure this out because I was very curious to, to know what these numbers were. Um, John asked if he thought you wanted to sell machines. Uh, yeah, that's... If I was trying to... Like I said, this is a, a, if this was my sales pitch, that uh, new machines are so much more efficient that they'll pay for themselves in the electrical savings, if that's the argument I'm making, that's the number right there. 111 years is what it will take for you to rec recoup the cost of your new machine in electrical savings alone. Now, could you figure out the speed of the machines and figure out how much more you could sew and factor that into the equation? 
Oh. So base it on like cost per stitch. Because if stitches per minute, we could figure that out. Because you that's a valid point. Because a newer machine is gonna sew much faster than an older machine. So actual efficiency of stitching goes up as well. So this number might actually be smaller if we were to base it on the speed of the machine and the efficiency of the machine. There's a lot of variables in here. I didn't even think of that. Should have see too many years. Yes, but if you do continue to use, that's correct, John. If you do use an old machine, you are using more electricity than you would need to. So the cost benefit is there too. And like I said, if we figure out the efficiency price per stitch, price per stitch per minute, that's the number we have to come, at, come up with next. What that'll be good for, I do not know. What this means, I have no idea. But every now and then, I just want to do a fun math problem and think through it. And that's what I did, and I thought you'd all kind of enjoy it. See, I kept it all nice and neat so you can kind of see the, see the, the difference there. But the, the, big, the big thing to remember is going to be when we talk about electricity is you really do want to pay attention to your watts and your, or more to your amps because most houses, are, the circuit breakers are measured in amps. So uh, most houses have 15, uh, 15 amp breakers on newer houses. Some will have 20, um, which means that if the current gets more than 15 amps, your circuit breaker pops. So you do want to keep an eye on your amp draw on everything that's plugged in to make sure that it's never going to peak past that 15 amps, which will then pop your circuit breaker. If that, and, um, and that's why, like I said, you keep an eye on your irons. You can get higher rated circuit breakers, but you have to talk to an electrician to make sure that the electricity going to <laughs> the house is proper. Yes, John, that is correct, John. If you bought two machines, Wait, I don't know if that logic works. Because now you have to recover the cost of two machines. But we're going to say in this case, yes. If you bought two machines, that cuts the time in half. And I know that is not right, but that's the story I'm going to stick with. <laughs> Unless you were sewing on both machines. If, you're sewing, if you were sewing on two separate, yeah, maybe. Anyway, so like I said, the, the big thing from a safety standpoint is also remember um, is, is amps. Your amp draw. Because if the more amps you're drawing through a wire, the ohms go will go up. More ohms means hotter wire resistance. That's ohms remember, measures resistance in wires. So as you try to push more current through a fixed size wire, it will get hotter. And that is the point of circuit breakers. That's the point of surge protectors is to pop stuff before it gets hot enough to melt things. So this was a fun exercise, but keep in mind amps is what's important. You don't want to draw more amps than what your, than what your um, circuit's capable of. So, you know, don't put the, the bolts in the fuse box. I've seen that at, the, at our camp. It has an old fuse box, and somebody put, I think, um, I think they put quarter, no, they put washers in them that fit in the old screw and fuses. Somebody had put some washers in because, you know, they couldn't find any fuses. That made me feel real good. I just, you know, but part of me was like, well, if we update the insurance, it'll solve a lot of problems. Anyway. Um, have you heard of a noise reduction surge protector? I have not. That's because that's the noise is reduced, so you can't really hear it. <laughs> it's a noise reduction, so yeah, you're, I'm not going to hear it. That is correct. One thing to keep in mind um, as we talk about stuff like this, there are different ways to, to protect voltage and kick stuff down, and a lot of the times it involves coils, and coils make noise, so I imagine that a re, uh, noise reduction is going to, but I don't know, because coils are usually for converting from AC to DC. I, yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of it, but it sounds interesting. Anyway, I'm, mo I'm rambling at this point. I hope you all learned something. And this is the sales pitch. If you want a new machine, um, this is what it's going to cost. That's, that's what it's going to take is 111, 111 years to recover the cost of a $2,000 sewing machine based on electrical efficiency. And I also thought this was interesting because as you start to, you know, the world we live in, everybody's talking about carbon footprints and all that. I've, it's very interesting that it's, um, I think this is a really interesting um, example of what technology does for us. Because when you look at this old Kenmore, it is, draws more current than these new machines. And even the bigger of the two of these new machines draws less energy than the smaller one. So... It's really interesting. We start talking about efficiency and thinking about you know becoming efficient and more conscious of our you know carbon footprint. You know, I'm 
do the air quotes, but it is something we think about because it, with the cost of electricity is going up. Technology, um, once you understand the electricity and technology, you're going to find that a lot of technology draws um, is more efficient, and efficiency is good, especially when you have to pay for your electricity at 15 cents a kilowatt hour. But anyway, I'm rambling. Uh, oh, the boards on the Bernina have trouble again. Oh. Um, okay, well, we're talking about electricity. Since we're here talking and we're rambling, this is actually might be kind of um, important for people that camp in RVs. Um, you have AC versus DC. You have generators. Um, the way with the... And this is something to keep in mind with older machines. I don't think it's as important as it is on newer stuff because the technology's gotten a little bit better. But you do have to worry about the wave formation from the electricity. And I was just thinking this because um, Jean had mentioned she's having trouble with the board on one of her Berninas. If it's an older, if you have an older machine and you have an RV and you take your machine camping and you're using the generator on your RV to run your machine, you may find that the electricity created by a generator has a diff is not as clean of a electrical wave, and that can interfere with some of the more sensitive electronics of newer stuff. That's something to keep in mind um, whenever you see like the new generators. Um, you know, they talk about wave generator, all the newer kind of um, electrical stuff for digital. Digital stuff will have trouble with um, older generators because of the. Uh, the the uh, electrical wave that's coming out of it it's not it's not clean enough and it can cause problems with some boards and stuff and that's something to keep in mind if you are in a place where electricity is questionable or your electricity is out for four or five days and you want to um, put your hook your machine up to the generator which you know happens you know you get hurricane everything gets knocked out and you're just hanging out at the house waiting for clean up like, hey, hey, do some sewing fire up the generator um, over time a long term use of DC converted stuff on a on a on an older generator can cause problems. Just throwing that out there. Um, if I mean I don't know any of you are like living in a third world country lugging your machine down to so, but that is a problem that can be a problem in some third world countries too, is because of the uh, electrical generation is not as clean as um, it needs to be for some stuff. Anyway. Yes, we should put electric. <laughs> But they, but they are. They, they, like I said, new machines are more efficient, and that is, and I, you know, for as many jokes as I make about, you know, you know, carbon footprint and Greenpeace and all that, it is important to be good stewards of the earth. And one of the things we can do is, you know, be efficient where we can. I say that, and then I'm going to go take my truck and waste a lot of gas getting lost in the woods, but, you know, we've got to draw a line somewhere. Anyway, that's all I got for today. I hope you all learned something. Um, if the, the takeaway is 111 years, that's the sales pitch. That's what it's going to cut. That's that 111 years. The machine pays for itself and electricity alone. So, thanks for watching. So on and be excellent to each other.